Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. This time I have a fairly simple and straightforward project, but with a little bit of a twist, making some picture frames with an epoxy uh, perimeter inlay fill kind of thing. Just sort of a weird idea I had bouncing around in my mind. It's always fun to have those ideas kind of come into reality and just kind of flush things out and see where that uh, idea or concept takes you. So the epoxy allows you to do a lot of different things with the colors and like the layout and all that. But what it also kind of does is act as a bit of a spline since we pour this after the frame is assembled. It basically ties the corners of the frame together so you don't need any additional splines or anything like that. So kind of a cool little twist on normal picture frames, I guess. This video is sponsored by Keeps. I'll tell you more about that later. But for now, let's get started making some picture frames. So I have two woods that are fairly contrasting so we can play around with two different uh, inlays and get a different look for things. First thing here is a piece of high temp thermally modified ash. It's a much darker color and it is I think a piece of decking or something like that. I got this from a viewer a few years ago. Nice short piece. It's going to work out really nicely for some frame stock. The other one here is a piece of birch. I got this from my in-laws uh, like the 10, 11 years ago before Liz and I were married. They got me a stack of wet lumber from a sawmill uh, that I had to dry myself. So I learned how to dry my own lumber. This was the very first stuff I ever dried myself in my basement. So it's been sitting around for a while. It's not super wide, so it's going to work out really nicely for a frame. Uh, this is going to be like a wider type frame, like three inches wide, and this will be more like an inch and a half because I'll rip this into strips. So I'm going to go ahead and chop the birch down to more rough length, joint plane, and get it all milled up into a nice stock. We'll do a very simple thing on the thermal modified ash. We'll just go through and rip it into a pair of strips, and that'll give us our stock to start cutting into all the frame parts. So I'll see you over at the table saw in a little bit. So the stock is all prepped and next we can kind of go through and figure out what we want to do as far as the molding profiles and all of the detail cuts that we want to make onto these pieces. So I'm going to start with the easy one because it's the one I know uh, I'm going to do for sure. It's going to need a rabbit for the glass and for the, uh, the actual thing that's going to get framed. So this is going to be a quarter inch by quarter inch uh, rabbit and I'm going to do that with two passes of a table saw blade so I don't have to uh, swap blades or anything like that. So now is the fun part, or maybe the uh, difficult part, if you don't like making decisions, <laughs> uh, and creating some kind of molding profile onto this stock. So I think on here I'm going to do maybe a 3 16 inch wide groove. That's going to be for that epoxy fill. That'll give me a nice little like strip of material on the outside, the epoxy strip, and then the interior. And then on the interior, I think I'm going to put a little bit of a bevel on here, something that will bring the rabbit down to... Oh, maybe like uh, an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths down here as well. And then come out maybe three quarters out to here. So a line that connects these two. So I'm going to knock this one out first because uh, I actually have an idea on this one. So uh, a couple of groove cuts and then I will tip the blade and make that uh, interior bevel cut. So this is how that one looks. And because I can only come up with one creative idea a day, apparently, I'm going to do basically the same thing on the wider one. I'm going to have a kind of narrower area here along the outside edge. And then we'll do an area here that's going to be for the pour, which will be 7 eighths of an inch wide. And then we'll also have that bevel there. It's going to be a different angle. This is going to be a lot wider of a cut. But it's going to be, I guess we're kind of doing matching frames in a sense, since the, uh, the overall theme of the profile is uh, basically the same. So same-ish operations before. I'm going to do some uh, grooves and then we'll make a nice little bevel. And then uh, miter time. So I changed plans a little bit. I left a bit of material here in the middle uh, and they are a little asymmetrical, the width of the grooves. So I don't know. That might make up, make something cool. I don't know. A strip in the middle there, whether or not it's two different things of epoxy or one wide one with this piece of wood breaking up the middle, I don't know. I'm making it up as I go. That's, uh, that's why I like these quick projects. 
And so let's get the, uh, the miter gauge here set for 45, and then we can start actually making some miters. Okay. Now with the first cut made, we can do some checks on our work pieces to make sure everything is actually set up correctly. You know, a lot of people really worry about setting up the saw and everything and dying it in, but they never check the actual result. It's a lot more important to check the actual result of your setup of what it's actually cutting, because that actually is what matters. So a few things you're gonna to wanna to check. First off, it's possible if you're using a miter gauge for the blade to pull the piece through as you're cutting it, creating a not flat surface, so create a bit of a curve on there. So with a straight edge, you can come in here and just verify that the cut is actually straight, it's not curved or doing anything weird. The other thing you wanna do is make sure it is actually at 45 degrees. So a couple of easy ways to check that right here on the saw. So a lot of people will use the square and check the 45. And they'll do something kind of like this. And that uh, it works okay, but you have a lot more resolution. If you come in like this, put the body of the square against the miter, and then you can actually see any error a lot further down because this is only you know this long, but I can extend this blade a little bit further and that'll exaggerate any error in that 45 degree angle. So I am maybe just a tiny little hair out just a tiny, tiny little bit, and I think that's probably just fine enough for uh, the length of this miter. If it was a really, really wide miter, that might be way more concerning. Now the kind of quick trick is to use the table saw, uh, table itself as the blade of the square. So we can take this ruler section out of here, you can put the workpiece down on a table like this and drop the square on here like this, and that gives you another really nice hands-free approach to checking the thing for square. Now the last check is gonna be that the cut is actually square because this cut is a compound cut. It's 45 degrees in this direction. It should be 90 in the other direction. So we can use a table again and our square. We can bring it in and check that the cut is actually square. This one is usually pretty easy for people since most of the time we're using the table saw at 90 degrees. So we're pretty good at setting our table saw to be square. And again, this looks pretty good. So I am good as far as setup goes to start walking through and making all my cuts. The other big precision thing with making picture frames is going to be that the two opposite sides of the frame are exactly the same length. That's gonna keep things from getting thrown off. That one's pretty simple to accomplish with a simple stop lock, making sure that all your cuts are gonna be exactly the same length. Because I'm making two different sized rectangular frames, I only have two pieces of each length. So instead of setting a stop lock, I'm just going to gain cut the pair just for convenience. So as I step through the miter cuts on all the frame pieces, let me tell you about this video sponsor, Keeps. Did you know two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? I'm, uh, I'm 33. <laughs> the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Keeps has revolutionized the way men are treated for hair loss. With Keeps, it's easier and more affordable to get treatment for your hair loss and to help you keep the hair you have. You used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. Now thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get medication delivered to your home every three months. Keeps offers a generic version of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. Some of you may have tried them before, but probably never for this price, so you don't have to go broke to avoid going bald. Prevention is key. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Keeps treatments can take up to four to six months or more to see results, so it's important to act fast. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash macromana or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash macromana. Thanks so much Keeps for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to these picture frames. Now is kind of the uh, moment of truth, I guess. Do a little test fit here and see how things look like they're coming together. In theory, they should be coming together nicely. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's throw a couple of clamps on here and then take a closer look, but I, I think it's looking just fine. <laughs> I would say that is looking pretty good. Uh, I'm sure the other one's gonna look just fine too. So this is pretty much ready for glue up. One little tip I'll give you though, if you're putting a bevel, down in here like I am, you want to sand this area first before doing the glue up because it's going to be 
basically impossible to get nice crisp inside corners if you're in here trying to sand again later on. This flat area doesn't matter because we can still sand that, but down in here, that all needs to be done before the actual glue up. And yeah, this one is uh, good as well. So for this glue up, I'm gonna be using Total Boat's traditional five to one epoxy resin. I'm using epoxy for this glue up for uh, a few reasons. So first off, the thermally modified ash does not really take well to uh, water-based glues since it is kind of water repellent. Uh, Epoxy also has a very long working time, so I, I shouldn't need it for this, but I'm not really in a rush. So if I need to like tweak something and get in a position, I have like all the time in the world practically to get this uh, frame in its final position before leaving it alone. And third, and probably most importantly, is that uh, using epoxy for the glue up for the miters is gonna allow me to do the pour into here right away. I don't have to wait for any kind of glue to cure or anything like that. If I used a PVA glue, I have to wait for the water to come out of that area before pouring the epoxy so you don't get any hazing from the extra water that's in that glue. So just for efficiency's sake, this is going to make the most amount of sense and then we're actually going to pour this product into all these grooves anyways. It's all going to kind of fuse together all at once. And another plus is if I uh, mix up too much epoxy at this point for this glue up, I'm just going to end up reusing it to pour into the grooves. So. Less waste, I guess. <laughs> Looking like it's lining up really nicely. One other little tip is if you're gonna do these bevels, again, it's gonna be a good idea to clean up your squeeze out now because it's gonna be almost impossible to get down in there and clean this up cleanly later on. So yeah, just a little bit of uh, glue left. So I think we're gonna do the little one first. I'm gonna use, I think some copper pigment. I think it's gonna look really cool up against that really dark uh, color of the thermally modified ash. Totally not scientific way of pigmenting this, but it seems like that's gonna be a lot. Yeah, let's do a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, that's actually a pretty cool color. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to pour this in here without making an absolute mess of everything. Uh, I will make one last little note, is when you're doing these pours, the surface you have this frame sitting on, you want to have it be level, because uh, otherwise, you're gonna have a mess. And you know, another little variation on this too is if you wanted to pour two different colors and have them like mix and meet somewhere along the frame, you could do that too. That would be kind of cool. One of the things that I like about this concept is you have a lot of options for customization and really just changing it up just based off how wide you make these grooves, what color you make the epoxy, and all of that. Okay, this is kind of fun. <laughs> now for the big one. So since this frame is a lighter color, I'm going to go for something a little bit bolder. We got some blue here and I have some micro pearl, which is going to give it some iridescence. So again, I have no idea how much of this I'm going to put in here. I'm going to put a lot because I want it to be pretty punchy. And uh, let's see, maybe this much. Let's just see. Mix it up. Let's do maybe a little bit more blue. Yeah, that seems pretty good. <laughs> so this is gonna go into the slightly wider inside groove. So I'm gonna try and pour that as best as I can to get it to stay outside, stay out of the outside groove. And then I'm gonna mix up something else for that. I have some, uh, some black-ish pigment, which might look good with this. I, don't, I have no idea. If it doesn't look good, you're welcome, so you know. <laughs> so you won't make this mistake if it is a mistake, or if it's awesome, you'll know. Regardless of what happens, we'll know. It's all about discovery. So 
these actually look pretty slick. Maybe, just maybe, I'm onto something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So a little bit of uh, sand to get these things ready for finish prep. We have the epoxy fills to flush up. When I did the pours, I overfilled these a little bit, so they ended up a little bit uh, high of the surface or proud of the surface, so I can flush them back down to the wood. That's also where all the uh, extra bubbles are gonna live, if there are any. So the sanding should remove any bubbles and flush everything up, and then we should be good to go for some finish. And for that, I'm just gonna use some spray lacquer. It should be a pretty quick little process. After I've got a few coats of spray lacquer on there, I can drop in the glass and then attach all the hardware and everything like that. And then these should be pretty much good to go. So I'm pretty happy with the way these things turned out. I think this concept has some legs, so to speak. Uh, on here, I, I like this color combination. I'm not, I'm kind of going back and forth on, on this thing here, but you know, for proof of concept, it doesn't really matter. But uh, I can see this being something you could do for like, uh, you know, team colors, if you're into, you know, sports or whatever it is that teams may have colors for. <laughs> Again, it's just kind of fun to stick together shop and just try something new and experiment and just have fun. It doesn't really matter if it ends up working, at least you have an idea of what works and what doesn't. So we talked a little bit about picture framing in this video. If you want a little more of a deeper dive into it, you can check out the free picture frame building class over in the guild. I will do a link to that one. That one is a free one. So you can see how the guild is structured in case you want to take a look at one of the furniture making classes. So I have a link to that as well as links to everything I use to make these frames down in the description below. Thank you again to Keeps for sponsoring this video and Thank you, as always, for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the picture frames or anything here in the new shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.